uh, Blackest Ninja is the name uh, that a cousin of Jordan Manners goes by as an artist in Toronto, and he joins us on the line. Good afternoon. Yes, the afternoon is good. How are you doing? I'm very good. I thank you for joining us. The the sum of this report today seems to be that it's not about schools. It's not schools that are the problem. It's a community problem. And I know you're very much a community activist, but, I mean, how do we characterize the problem? Maybe you might have, in being on hold, heard my first caller who said, hey, how come we don't talk about uh, fatherless families? How come we don't talk about the gangster culture? Why don't we talk about the real issues here? We're ignoring them. Do you agree with that? Well, that, of course, I have to agree with that as well, because the real issues are the issues in the community, and nobody just wants to go and be a bad man because it's nothing to do. Um, crime and everything comes with poverty and with um, you know, not having the finances able to just do the things that you want to do. So that's not because these youths are just watching television and listening to a song and they just want to go do that. That's the first, first thing. Number two... These are children, not cattle. People are thinking that in order to raise a child, we have to have them disciplined, raise, um, have them locked down, have them whatever. Our parents, the parents are supposed to do that. The teachers are supposed to teach. The teachers are supposed to engage with the children. And if that means the teachers can't relate to them maybe because they're not the same background or don't understand how he talks like that or how, he, how they act like that, then there should be teachers that directly accommodate those students if there's such a high-risk problem. And I don't, I don't know the fullness of this argument right now, but a little thing that I do get is, like, they're using, they're using a tragic mishap as, a, as a, like, a, a starting for some, something, a bigger plan. Because if you're going to incorporate dogs and securities or basically guards in the school, in the hallways, Number one, are they going to have the tolerance that teachers have, that you're supposed to have with adolescents? Are they going to go through that, that rigorous training that they've gone through to be a teacher, to deal with just the average youth? Are they going to have them in every single school, not just high-risk schools? Because if you just have them in the high-risk schools, that becomes more of a stereotype for these children that come from these areas that I don't understand that high-risk term anyways. Yeah. And when somebody from another area sees them, from Richmond Hill or all of these other schools that have a little bit more finances, they'll be like, oh, you're from Jeffries. You go to the school with the dogs and stuff. Yeah, well, actually, if, if I may, because I know you weren't able to hear the press conference, but it, it is going to happen board-wide. And uh, it's going to be done not by police, but by... Uh, Toronto District School Board employees. But let me ask you, we're talking with Blackest Ninja, who's a cousin of Jordan Manners, who was shot to death last May uh, in a Toronto school, C.W. Jeffries. I'll, whenever I do a topic like this, Blackest Ninja, I will get calls from young black women who will say, I'm a single mother, I've got my life together, I don't have a lot of money, but I make sure my kids show up for school, that they're fed, and if they had a gun, I'd give them a good whooping. Of course. I think every single mother that loves a child would have to definitely do that, especially if your child is barely made it, it through puberty and he's walking with a gun. There's something wrong here. And it cannot be the child's fault, even though he's young and these guys are, will charge a young offender as an adult for doing a violent crime. There's something more into the, what the crime is. You have to see why he did the crime, his background, what was going on. It's not like it's a grown man who's um, 28 years old or 20-odd years old going in a college or anything like that, right? These are young, and at the same time, people, the, the generation that always comes up every single time, it's always going to be a little bit kind of a resistance from the system or the majority or the, the politics of it, because that's what exactly what it is, it's politics. These people are telling you how to raise your children, and our own mothers and parents who have children don't even know how to raise their own children. We need to teach, we need to, it's more than a, safety issue in the school. It's a bigger problem. It's it community-wide, yeah. Exactly. And people aren't, aren't listening. And the leaders now that are in charge are saying, hey, don't worry about that. You guys ain't going to have the dogs in your schools, or we'll have dogs in every school. And, and people, are they forgetting the, the, the friggin', sorry, sorry, are they forgetting the, 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 the relationship? Black people especially have with dogs in, in mass situations like that? These things are going to be back in, uh, these emotions and all these stuff are going to be invoked, and it's going to deter the youth from, from wanting to go to learn. Instead of going to school to learn, they're going to think, oh, this is the prison cell. Let me ask you just just before uh, before going, because I'm afraid we're almost out of time. We're talking with Blackest Ninja, who's a cousin of Jordan Manners. It's been eight months since your cousin was shot dead. Yeah, eight months. Can I ask you how the family is doing? Um, you can't ask me that. 
you missed the morning, you know you can't ask him that. Because that's like, it's the same thing as like yesterday. You can ask anybody that. Any one of these mothers that lost their children, and any one of these brothers that lost their brother and lost their cousin or lost their father or lost their mother, you can't ask them that. That's a question that can never be answered because that's pain, you know. But exactly, that's another emotion that you have that we have that we have to exert that energy into our children, into our future, because if we don't better our youth, they're going to continue to be the martyrs of our problems, and we can't have that, because we are supposed to be protecting them. They shouldn't be happy that right now our youth is dying off, and we're learning, and we as big people are learning this as lessons. This shouldn't, we shouldn't be learning anything. We should be knowing what to do and do it, with the best interests of certain kind of concepts and certain, and certain kind of political views need to be stretched so the, so the leaders will put these things in, out here just to divert the people's attention from what we really need to be doing. And that's trying to guide our youth, our children in the future. That's the most important thing. Education is the only thing that we should care about. And now we talk about hiring more teachers. And the teachers been wanted to get more teachers all along ago. I know teachers. <laughs> but you know what? This is the exact like you said, this is not the overnight yeah, solution. No, you're absolutely right. And, and a lot of people are going to have a lot of different perspectives and they're saying, yeah, put it up in there, but we, we, once you know that there's dogs and there's security in our schools, it hasn't, it's not school anymore. Like it's a ninja, place. thank you All very right. much. Appreciate it. All right, peace. Like a ninja is a Toronto-based artist, cousin of Jordan Manners, community activist.